Hey everyone, it's Dustin Nolf, Keller Williams Realty, the Dustin Nolf team, and the Full House LLC Pittsburgh Property Management. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to look at a seller's estimated cost sheet, and uh, this is going to be an example of what a real estate agent would prepare for a seller client. Uh, you would want to prepare this at the listing presentation as well as uh, when you receive an offer and or negotiate a different price than the offer that you've received. So there's a lot of times that you'd be editing something like this. Uh, in Pennsylvania, it is legally required that you provide a cost sheet, an estimated cost sheet like this. So you want to get the uh, seller clients to sign off on it and you want to have this in your file. As far as my team is concerned, if this is not in your file and we close a deal, you do not get paid until it gets in your file. Uh, again, it's a legal requirement, so if you don't have it in your file, you can face fines and or uh, removal of your license. So let's get rolling. This is my favorite cost sheet to do because it's way easier than the buyer estimated cost. There's not like variables. Uh, like with the buyer estimated cost, it depends on what mortgage company you're using, what site, what type of loan the buyer is getting and that sort of stuff. Those are going to all... Uh, create a differential for mortgage cost and, and, and cost on there. Um, for the seller estimated cost, it's pretty much routine. Like if you know your area, you know your transfer tax and that sort of stuff, It's this is super easy to calculate. Um, and what I do, you can see, I've already got numbers in here. What I do uh, is I'll create a template that's already partially filled out. So the only things I really got to get in here are the numbers that are going to vary based on either the location or the percentages. So we're going to take a look here at a uh, example property. We're going to assume that it's selling for $250,000. So if I were listing this property at $250,000, when I'm at the listing presentation, I'm going to do a seller estimated cost sheet for the seller that shows what they would net if they sold it for the ask price. And for this one, we're going to just punch in some numbers here and we're going to make some assumptions. I'm going to assume that I'm collecting a 6% commission with an admin fee. So this is how I would normally put this in here. 6% plus, let's say we're collecting a $750 admin commission. And we'll call it a flat admin commission. Um, so I like to make sure that all of our numbers and costs are disclosed at least two or three times. So we disclose these things uh, multiple times when we're doing a listing presentation. Our listing contract has our broker's fee and our admin fee on it. Uh, we have a disclosure that has the admin fee on it. And then when we do the estimated cost sheet, it's got the uh, commission and the admin fee all on it. So we're putting that in there. Um, transfer tax, we're going to say City of Pittsburgh, and we're going to show you how to find that. Um, actually, we're going to use a different example today because we used the City of Pittsburgh for the buyer's side. So let's say, uh, let's pretend we're closing a property in Hampton Township. All right, so that'll give us a little bit of variation. Um, and we're going to assume, like I got my home warranty number in here, we're going to assume that this is like all our standard costs here. So the cool thing is, is that these are already, I already know what these numbers are. I've already got, got them punched in. Um, you're going to want to do your research and make sure that you know your numbers. If you're on my team, these numbers are going to be accurate for our area. But if you're in a different location than the Pittsburgh area, you're going to want to double check these numbers. And I'm going to tell you kind of as we go through here, who would know what those numbers are going to be. So first things first, our broker's fee is based off of the sale price. We're going to say the sale price is full ask price, and we're going to calculate the commission plus the admin fee. So we've got a $250,000 list price times 0.06% commission, and then we've got the flat fee of $750. So that's how I do that. Quick calculation, $15,750. Deed preparation. This is going to depend on who the seller wants to prepare the deed. In Pennsylvania, the seller can choose who's preparing the deed. However, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt if the seller chooses one company and it's a different company than the title company. Um, so a lot of times, for the sake of ease, the title company will prepare the deed so long as the seller agrees to let them do that. 
Um, a lot of times the preparation, the deed in our area is going to be $250 or less. So that's why I got that number in there. If you don't know from experience, you would want to ask a couple title companies and or attorneys what they charge to prepare a deed. So that's where I got that number. Uh, transfer tax. So we've got, um, we're going to assume that we're in Hampton Township. I'm going to close these out so you can see how I'm finding this information from scratch. Um, if I want to find out transfer taxes, this is what I do. Transfer tax rates, Allegheny County. So see how that, that pops up there? That's because I search it all the time because I don't remember these. Why well, remember them when you can look them up? you only got so much brain space, right? So don't fill it with a whole bunch of useless information that you don't need. Yes, you need transfer taxes, but if you can look them up, why waste brain space? Uh, so we're looking for Hampton Township here on our transfer tax rates. And here we are, 1% in Hampton plus a half for the school district. Uh, and we're gonna scroll up and we got here, uh, it says Allegheny County 1.16. There is a, uh, a state transfer tax too. So it's 1% in Pennsylvania. So because in, on Hampton Township, we've got one here plus a half here plus the one for the state. So it's a 2.5% total transfer tax. Um, we need to remember that the, in our area, in the Pennsylvania Association of Realtor Sales Agreement, it states that the buyer and the seller will split the transfer tax equally. Um, you can write in something differently if you want, but in most cases it's split equally and then we're going to just assume that that's happening. You can always negotiate something different if you want to, but the standard agreement has it written in that it's split equally. So we, we said it was two and a half. We're going to split that equally and that leaves 1.25% per side. I'm going to make a note of that here and I'm going to explain it to my client when we get to this point. So what's one and a half percent of 250? I'm not good with math, so I am calculating it. I'm sorry, one and a quarter percent of 250 is 31.25. 31.25. Seller assist. If the seller was agreeing to give the buyer closing cost, you would write that in here, whatever the amount is. If it's a percentage or a dollar amount, you're going to fill that in. Uh, if I'm taking a listing, I'm never going to put this in. Usually, I'm going to say. This is negotiable. We can deal with that when it comes along. As of right now for this estimate, we're going to assume that you're not paying it. Home warranty, whatever home warranty company you're suggesting, you should put their cost in here. Municipal certifications, I think we're actually up to 175 for those. We're going to pop those in here. This is a rough estimate. Every municipality has different costs for this stuff, but this is going to be pretty, pretty close. Certificate of resale. So if this property were a homeowners association or condo, sometimes they have a cost to do a certificate of resale and you would want to check with the condo association, make sure the seller is getting the certificate of resale ahead of time if possible and find out what that cost is. A lot of times the seller can pay for that outside of closing. So it's not necessarily going to be something you're calculating here. Settlement fee, this is going to be the settlement fee charged to the seller by the title company in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, again, usually it's under 250 bucks. I'm putting 250 in there to be safe. Notary fees, save, same things. Usually it's like 25 bucks or less. The seller doesn't have to pay for a notary unless it's negotiated in a deal, so we're putting a zero. On lot sewage, this would be if uh, they had a septic system and it needed to be pumped before closing. Again, a lot of times they're paying for that outside of the closing, not in the closing. So you, you would have them pay up front for that. And they would pay the vendor directly. Any property repairs, again, I'm not going to estimate what their property repairs might be. We're going to put zero there. Tax certifications, I'm going to make that 175 because it's more like that number right now here in the, the locality. If you want to know what those numbers should be for your area, you're going to talk to a title company or closing company and they'll be able to give you an estimate. Uh, overnight or express mail charges. So if the seller's got a mortgage, a lot of times there, there's either gonna be a wire fee to the mortgage company to pay it off, or there's gonna be an overnighting fee and it's gonna be 50 bucks or less, usually. And that's it, all the rest of these are zeros. So we've got our estimate pretty much done. We're gonna save it so it doesn't crash on us. 
and then we're going to add up all these numbers and get a grand total. Grand total, 20,395, we put that here. Um, and now, like, when you're in a buyer's market, it is super important to make sure that your seller's not underwater before you take a listing, because if they are, then they either need to come to the uh, closing table with cash, or you need to do a short sale. Um, so you need to figure that out ahead of time. If you're doing a short sale, it adds a lot more legwork and the seller's got to accept that fate and, and decide to do it and they need to cooperate. And short sales are a total pain in the butt. So the seller needs to get a lot of paperwork to the, to the lender and they're selling the property for less than they owe is what, what you're doing basically. So you want to know that ahead of time. And, and what we're going to do now is figure out what the net is going to look like for the seller. And then we're going to talk about a good script to, to use to make sure that um, you're not getting into a short sale and you don't know about it. In a seller's market, you know, usually things are more peachy keen and uh, you're still going to want to kind of ask this question just to be safe though. So we are down to our costs. We're going to pull up our calculator real quick again. And we're going to take the 250 sale price and we're going to subtract 20,395 and we get 229,605. And what this gives us here is the estimated proceeds before the loan payoff. So this is what the seller would get before they pay off their mortgage, taxes, any liens on the property. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them this exactly. And I'm gonna say, this is what you'd walk away with before you pay off your mortgage, your taxes, and your liens. Is that enough to clear everything? If they say yes, then we're good to go. If they say, well, I, I owe, I owe $250,000. Well, then you're gonna have to bring about $21,000 to the closing table. Are you okay with that? No. Well, great, we might have to do a short sale. Are you okay with doing a short sale? There could be tax implications to that. Uh, that's, that's when you wanna kinda grind things to a halt and figure out what the next steps are. So that's that. I don't do, I don't calculate tax prorations, I don't calculate liens, I don't do any of that stuff because I don't know what they are. And I'm not, it's, it's none of my business to sit and, and uh, rummage through that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to just kind of ask the seller and see how they answer the question and uh, take it from there. If they say that they have liens and that sort of stuff and this, this may not cut it, then I'm going to want to investigate further and po possibly get copies of payoff information and that sort of stuff before I move forward. But that's that. I, uh, <clears throat> I don't put in their mortgage amount either because I don't know what that is and I assume that they know roughly what it is and I'll tell them to compare that. Uh, but that's it. You're going to get the sellers to sign off on this. You're going to store this and you need to store your paperwork. I think it's for at least three years in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, and so if you get audited, you have copies proving that you delivered this to your client. Um, so that's it. That's the seller estimated cost sheet. Uh, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about that, this, uh, please put it in the comments below. Uh, and if you want to let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn, you can put that in the comments below as well. And just a reminder, if you are not a Pennsylvania real estate agent and or you are not on my team, uh, you would want to clear all this with your broker because there may be a def different way to calculate and find this information in your area. So you want to make sure that you are being advised by your leader. Uh, thanks again for joining me. I'll see you later.